fix it. Good morning and welcome to the second Sunday of Advent. It's good to have you with us as we begin worship this morning. And our gathering song is How Great Is Our God. <clears throat> the splendor of the King, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, and trembles at his voice. How great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. And age to age he stands, and time is in his hands, beginning and the end beginning and the end. The Godhead three in one, Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb. How great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. That's why we're here to worship and praise the greatness of our God. It's good to have you with us. We time, turn to a time of confession and forgiveness. <clears throat> Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are had captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God, wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear the glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven and you are free. Free from all that holds you back and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love, comforted by God's peace, and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. At this time during the season of Advent, we have the lighting of our Advent candle, and um, Izzy's here to do that. Um, and so, uh, it's uh, the Bethlehem candle, the first candle, uh, was the prophecy candle. Thank you. 
Let us turn to God in a moment of prayer. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, strengthen us to serve you with purified lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our special not just two people, but three people, and so it's nice to have Carolyn with us this morning also. We'll be singing Go Tell It on the Mountain this morning. much and since uh, we enjoyed that so much we're going to have you to sing something near the end of the worship too <laughs> all right well it's time for our our children's our our teenage moment since we have our teenager izzy okay izzy if you'll walk over here and let's see we left off last week with just number one because it wasn't even december yet right and you know what the date is today december six six i think i think is it the six? I think you're right. It's the six. Wait, let's check with everybody. Six? Yeah, six. Oh, okay, six. So we have to go from number one to number six. Six. Okay, they're in the box. If you go over to the box there and find number two, number two is a star. That's good. I'm glad you put it up in the air. <laughs> All right. Number three. These, these, these are kind of fun here, I think. But anyway, number three is a palm tree. Palm tree. That's a great place for a palm tree. All right. And number four is a another palm, tree. another palm tree. Oh, you're putting them right next to I like that. Okay, that's three and four and five is a another palm tree. Is this exciting? <laughs> you see, we have to 31 days or so we have to grow something. Or 25 days, yeah. 
Okay, and number, that's number six? Yep. All right. Just, I'm just curious, look in the box. There's no more palm trees, right? There's one more palm tree? Is there one? Okay, <laughs> okay one more palm tree. Anyway, so um, do you like trees? Yeah. What's your favorite tree? I don't know. What? I don't know. You don't know? I really like palm trees. You, do you like palm trees? Pine. Pine trees, pine trees, okay. Yeah. All right, how about those kind of trees? You like there's Christmas no tree. trees? What kind of trees are Christmas trees? You know, there's all kinds. Some are pine, some are blue spruce and other things, yeah. So. Um, so, I don't know, I, I'm kind of partial to Christmas trees, right? Now, something else has appeared since last Sunday. Do you see anything else that's new up here? The nativity. Where? On the altar. On the altar, but is that the full nativity? No. No, what is that? Just Mary, Joseph, a shepherd, and sheep, I think. Okay, well, wait, let's see. Well, I don't know. I don't see Mary and Joseph. Do you? No. No, what are, what are, what's up there? Just shepherds. I the think. shepherds, okay. And what are they doing? Um, I don't know what the word would be, but like they're taking care of the sheep. Taking care of the sheep? Yeah. By night. By night would they would take. Would there be like a shepherding? Is that like a word? What, shepherd? Shepherding? Shepherding. Shepherding is a word. Yes, that's a good that. word. Shepherding are. That take care of sheep but also we talk about that in the church that shepherds take care of each other mm -hmm. and and that so that's a good so so we have to keep an eye on that because i think as we go closer there's going to be people that are going to be joining that group Ooh. yeah so that's going to be kind of fun in fact they're kind of down here but don't look there okay <laughs> the banner is also new oh thank you the banner's new and that says what bethlehem, bethlehem. and our candle today is the bethlehem candle, bethlehem candle. What happened in Bethlehem? Jesus was born. Jesus was born, that's right. Yeah, so you, you get an A for today. Thank you. A plus. <laughs> you did good, okay, yay. Let's have a prayer, let's pray. Dear God, we thank you uh, for this time to gather and we thank you as we keep on this journey to Christmas. And we pray that you will uh, just help us to focus and to be prepared for not only the coming of the Christ child, but also the coming of Jesus in our day, in our days, and in our lives. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Izzy, thank you very much. reading is from Isaiah chapter 40 verses 1 through 11. Comfort, oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice cried, says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is our God, your God. See the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his shop, flock 
like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. <coughs> Words of God, gospel acclamation. Alleluia, prepare the way of the Lord. All flesh shall see the salvation of God. Alleluia. Our holy gospel comes to us this morning from the gospel of Mark, uh, the first chapter beginning at the first verse. Glory to you, O Lord. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism for repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord. As we prepare for our time with God's word for this morning, our centering prayer is the fourth verse of Old uh, Old Town of Bethlehem. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. Oh, come with us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. Amen. Prepare. We hear that twice in our gospel for today from the prophet Isaiah. I see I'm sending a messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. And a little bit later on, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Prepare. That's what we're doing in these days. Some of us prepare by decorating. Some of us prepare by baking and cooking. So I thought I would give you a little test this morning. I have a list of ingredients here, and I want you to guess what it is that you would be making with these ingredients. Okay, you ready? One cup butter softened, one cup white sugar, one cup packed brown sugar, two eggs, two teaspoons of vanilla extract, one teaspoon of baking soda, two teaspoons of hot water, a quarter teaspoon of salt, and three cups of all-purpose flour. There's about two people here. <laughs> You're right. I forgot the two cups of semi-sweet chocolate chips. So you, Carolyn, you get the gold star. There you go. Okay. It, but it's interesting. If you read all those things and I say, oh, wait, I forgot the chocolate chips, right? You could still have cookies, but you wouldn't have as good a cookies. That's right. So sometimes when we prepare, we, we forget something along the way. And so that just helps us to remember is, okay, let's put that on the list for the next time. Let's make sure we have all the ingredients. Let's make sure that we're ready. That's what preparations are all about. As I was thinking about that, I was, as I was driving to church this morning, I was thinking about how God prepared us for this moment. Some of you have been preparing for a while now. Uh, some of you have learned what a computer is. <laughs> some of you have learned how to get on Zoom. Some of you have learned that there's a thing called Facebook and you can do that also. And some of you have learned email for the first time. That has prepared you for this moment. 
sometimes people say is, you know, I, if someone would have told me a year ago that we would have been doing this, I would have said, you're crazy. Well, this is a crazy world that we live in. And so God has prepared us for this moment. And so we continue to live in this moment for as long as it will be. And God will prepare us for the next moment. And so we're continually being prepared. We're continually changing how we do things so that we are prepared. Today, we've got a wonderful story of John the Baptist. Actually, the season of Advent is kind of interesting because we actually get John the Baptist for two weeks. So I thought this week I wanted to focus in on John himself, just John the Baptist. Um, he gets that the Baptist put on there because he was doing baptizing. And so that just tells us that he's different from the other Johns. That's the only reason there, but it's John. And I can imagine John growing up and maybe he was uh, kind of a rambunctious kind of a little boy there. Zachariah and Elizabeth probably had their hands full. And, and when John probably says, you know what, I'm going to go live out in the wilderness, they probably said, <laughs> but they said, be careful, be safe, wear a mask. And he goes out into the wilderness. And it almost seems like he's out there all by himself, but he's not. He joins a community of people who are known as the Essenes. They have lived out there at the edge of where the Jordan River comes down to the Dead Sea there. They're living about right there. We had a, the wonderful opportunity to actually visit that area there, which is called Qumran. Now, you might have heard of Qumran. I'll get back to that, but that's where these people were living. And the reason that they were living there and out there in the wilderness is that they were getting tired of what was happening up in the temple. They were getting tired of all the rules and the regulations. They thought that everything was wrong because they weren't following the word of God. There was just too much. And so they said, we are going to just separate ourselves. And so they find themselves out there in the wilderness, in the desert, where the Jordan River comes down and meets the Red Sea. So there's John the Baptist. And he's part of this community. And what's interesting about this community is, if you, if you can go to Qumran whenever you can, is, is that you'll see the ruins of all the buildings. And there are these big basins, or even like, they look like kind of bathtubs. And they're all over the place. This community believed in ritual washing. You basically took a full bath before every meal. That's a mother's delight, isn't it? <laughs> Not just wash your hands, but you wash. And, and every time you go before, if you're, you're studying scripture, you're doing things, it was ritual washing. And I love to be part of that community, just to be there, because it's where the Old Testament and the New Testament come right in there. With John the Baptist and this group of people, the Essenes there in Qumran, the Old Testament meets the New Testament. The ritual washing of the Old Testament there becomes baptism in the New Testament. And it was just a marvel to be there. Now, as I said, you've probably heard of Qumran before because um, those are the people that started to write down all the scriptures that they could remember. And you know what happened was, I think most of you do, is they rolled them up in scrolls, they put them in clay jars, and they put them up in the mountains. The Dead Sea Scrolls. That was their community. And I think probably about 10 years ago, they're still discovering uh, part of these rolls and part of these Dead Sea Scrolls. There's a wonderful museum in Jerusalem, um, and basically the top of it uh, looks like the top of a clay jar, kind of interesting, but as you go in there, um, it's one of the Psalms, I can't remember if it's Psalm 151, is you can actually walk around and you can read the scroll. And of course, I think with Hebrew, you got to go backwards, so maybe it's this way. But it's an interesting community. So there's John the Baptist, Jesus' second cousin from most of what we hear, and he goes out into the wilderness. As you look through the Bible, the wilderness is a time to kind of focus. We think of Moses, who uh, goes out in the wilderness and, and, and comes upon the burning bush. And God speaks to Moses at that time through the burning bush. The Exodus. The people of Israel are, are sent to wander out in the wilderness for 40 years. And then there's Jesus himself, moving ahead in the story there, who goes out in the wilderness 40 days and 40 nights, and the 
tempted by the devil three different times. The wilderness. It's not all barren there, but it's a real time to focus on what is happening there. And so John is part of this community. They have ritual washing there. And suddenly, um, as it says in our text for today, is that the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Israel were going out to him. I think it was just a fascination, maybe. Maybe they just wanted to see what was going on. Anyway, when they go out there, they see John, who is baptizing, but it's a baptism of cleansing to prepare, not the baptism that we know today. And so John was preparing the way. And that's what Isaiah talks about. See, I'm sending a messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. That's what John is sent out there to do, is to get people ready. And hopefully they heard that message. And they knew that Jesus was there. The Messiah was truly part of their world now. So the question as we look back on John the Baptist for us today is, is, is where, where could we find a wilderness? Where could we find a place to kind of refocus and recenter our lives? Uh, sometimes it's not so much of a physical place, but maybe it's just a mental place. Maybe there's a place in our home or in our yard somewhere where we can just declare, this is my wilderness. This is where I'm going to sit down and refocus. How do we prepare our hearts and minds for the coming of Christ? One thing to prepare is, is for the, the coming of Christ as we celebrate Christmas. How can we prepare our hearts and minds for that moment? But how can we prepare our hearts and minds each and every day to receive God again? For Jesus, you know, God's present with us. We're the temple of the Holy Spirit. How can we remember that on a daily basis? Well, one of the ways I think that we can help to remember is to remember our baptism. Go back to our roots. Martin Luther woke up every day and he made the sign of the cross on his forehead. Every day he was reminding himself that God loved him. Every day he was reminding himself that God was with him, no matter what. So our wilderness can be part of that remembering our baptism. And if you haven't looked at your baptismal picture, if you, if you have it somewhere, is just take a look at that. Uh, when my mother was here, we were talking about my baptism, and she didn't remember too much. And I says, but mom, I, I have a picture. <laughs> I remember that picture, not the day, of course, but I remember that. I think at that time I was uh, three, four months old or something. And it's nice to have that picture. And in fact, the pastor that baptized me became the uh, president of Pacific Lutheran Theological Seminary up in Berkeley where I went to seminary. It was just fun. So remember our baptism and maybe help your children remember their baptism. This would be a wonderful time to do that. And so that's one way that we can prepare our hearts and minds is to remember who we are and who we belong to and who loves us. And then it's to focus. Our world today is it's hard to focus. Um, I just, there's a lot of anxiety around us. There's things are changing on a daily basis. We, we just heard that we're going to have to oh, lock down again. What does that mean? How can we stay focused? How can we do our best to, to help each other and to keep everyone safe? We find those ways and we continue to do them no matter what. And so John the Baptist comes to us as a wonderful character, as it says there that He's out there in the wilderness. He's clothed with camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist and ate locusts and wild honey. What a guy, right? Camel's hair. Can you imagine what that must have felt like? And a leather belt around his waist. And I think locusts and wild honey, I think that that's what they ate. I think that that's just part of their community. And so as we focus on this very interesting character, let's remember what he was there to do. He was the messenger, the messenger to prepare the way of the Lord. So let us prepare our hearts and our minds as we prepare to receive Christ again. Amen. Our, uh,
musical interlude, as we're calling it there, is a wonderful hymn. Uh, we have a couple of good, very Advent hymns, and so this one is Hark the Glad Sound. continue our worship as we proclaim our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we move into a time of prayer, uh, we'll again focus ourselves as we sing, Lord, listen to your children praying. We'll sing that twice. the heavens and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. Faithful God, you teach us to wait for you with faithfulness and patience. Sustain and support us in our doubts and questions. 
Nurture our faith as we discern and enact your mission. Hear us, O oh God. Loving God, you set the stars in the sky and breathe life into the earth. Renew the face of creation where it is in need of your healing touch. Mend the wounds of environmental damage and restore balance to ecosystems so that all creation can declare your praise. Hear us, O oh God. Steadfast God, you never tire of seeking justice. Where people suffer from discrimination, judgment, and injustice, speak words of truth and comfort. Lead us toward a world where faithfulness will sprout underfoot and righteousness rain down from above. Hear us, O oh God. Leading God, you ask us to make uneven ground smooth, make even the disparities between your people, sustain and support people with physical and intellectual disabilities, accompany disability advocates for all to the great city in our midst. Hear us, O oh God. Tender God, you know sorrow and joy alike. We pray for those in our families and congregation who are not joyful in this holiday season. Comfort those who grieve. Be a companion to all who are lonely. Tend those who are sick or struggling with depression and gather all people in your healing embrace. Hear us, O oh God. Eternal God, we give thanks for the saints who have prepared your way in the wilderness and taught us to continue their faithful work. Make their generous lives an example for all. Hear us, O oh God. Lord God of healing and comfort, we pray for these in need of special prayers at this time. Glenn and Nona, John, Chris and Megan, we continue to pray for our first responders, healthcare workers, and those affected by COVID-19. Continue your prayers for the health and safety of all. We lift up and pray for Avis, Marion, Larry, Harriet, Don, Connie, Ron, Marilyn, Dorothy, Gwen, Neil, Jack and Carol, Judy, Barbara, and those that we mentioned in our hearts at this time. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of life and a celebration today, we lift up and pray for those who are celebrating their birthdays in this coming week. We pray for Jean Turnbull, Dorothy Little, Carl Bratz, Mary Ann Hamdorf, and Linda Spaulding. Lord God, continue to shine the light of your joy upon their pathway. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Even as we watch and wait, Christ is here. Come, eat and drink. Let us prepare ourselves for Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. 
It is indeed in right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. The earth is full of your knowledge and glory. You made all creatures to live in peace and safety and sent a little child to lead us. And so with the choirs of angels and with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy and greatest of majesty of your glory. Baptized by John, Christ came to deliver us from sin and to pour out the Holy Spirit upon your church. By our faith in Christ, we have the hope of eternal life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after the supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this also for the remembrance of me. Remembering your gracious act in Jesus Christ, we take from your creation this bread and wine and joyfully celebrate his dying and rising as we await the day of his coming. With thanksgiving, we offer our very selves to you to be a living and holy sacrifice dedicated to your service. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine. That the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your spirit, unite the church and with your church in all the world. Fill us with wisdom and understanding, knowledge and power, and grant that we may live in harmony with one another as we await the coming of the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Amen. Through Christ, in Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. With the confidence of the children of God, let us pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us continue to pray. Gracious and abundant God, you have done great things for us, and we rejoice. In this bread and cup, you give us life forever. In your boundless mercy, strengthen us and open our hearts to the world's needs. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Receive the blessing. The creator of the stars, bless your advent waiting. The long expected Savior, fill you with love. The unexpected spirit, guide your journey, both now and forever. Amen. And before our announcements, uh, we have our praise team and another wonderful song. Sing Awake, Awake, and Greet the New Morning.
This week we have on Tuesday, a men's Bible study in the council room and church council at 6.30. The Bible study, men's Bible studies at 9.30. And on Wednesday, we have Java and Jesus on Zoom. Everybody's welcome to get the link, uh, call the office. We have good discussions. We get lots of different interpretations of the scripture and we have some laughter and some very serious discussion. On um, next Sunday is our worship with Holy Communion on Zoom again. And uh, after the service at 11 o'clock, we'll do the congregational meeting on Zoom. So if you'd like to be a part of that, that uh, call the office and, and get the link. And um, we have all the altar flowers that we need for the month of December but we need three or four more poinsettias so we can get up to our number that we've ordered 10. And I think that's it. Have a good week. Thank you. One thing before the dismissal, um, as I stand up here, I am very aware of the preparations that took place during this last week. Now, um, this is wonderful decorations up here. Not just one Christmas tree, but two Christmas trees. <laughs> and, um, and next week, I think we'll turn on all the lights and everything, but um, it took a lot of time and a lot of preparation. And so I want to thank uh, those people that helped out with that. And also um, people behind the scenes that helped this to happen. Um, musicians and the praise team and um, uh, Heather's in the office making sure that it happens that's usually Sandy and so um, it's just a joy that there's a lot of people helping this to take place each and every Sunday it looks like it's real easy and we try to make it look real easy but it takes a lot of work and so I want to thank everyone for doing that so um, I think that's it for today so our dismissal God is good all the time, all the time. God is good Go in peace. Prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And uh, we'll enjoy our postlude since that was prepared for us for today.